Warning, strong content. This episode of Murder Trails includes references to true crime, murder and homicide and to people who are now deceased. For more information, please read our description. Welcome to Murder Trails, presented by Jack Sim and Crime Tours Australia. We're back with Murder Trails. We're talking about... James Finch, one of the two men convicted of the firebombing of the Whiskey A Go Go nightclub, which took place 50 years ago this year, 2023. And uh, John, John Peel, my guest today, John knew both these men as a prison officer working at Notorious Boggo Road Jail. Um, in early 1988, John uh, James Finch, Jim Finch, was released from prison. Yeah, Jim was sent back over to England, which is where he was born, deported to England. Um, gave very infamously the victory sign at the Brisbane airport as he got back on the plane. There were so many people that were, I remember it was live on television. You know, every channel had it. There were people I knew that would be cried and how they said with, you know, just how great it was that he'd finally done his time and was released a free man, given parole with the kind of over, overhanging element that he'd been released because you know, there was a genuine thought that perhaps, you know, he'd done his time and he was innocent of the crime and he skited that when he, you know, he won, he was released. He made a statement just a few months before that he did not want to die in Boggo Road Jail. That was like, that was his number one objective was to get out. And he achieved it, gave that victory symbol. But to people's absolute horror, those that had supported him, once he arrived in England, he made a full confession to the Sunday Sun newspaper to a journalist in England and was, the story was was aired in Australia as an exclusive. He basically admitted that him and John had done it. He even named other people involved in the case. Poor Cheryl and those who were his supporters. I mean, that were they didn't know what the hell to think. But Finch, um, in an exclusive in the, the, the Sun newspaper um, by Dennis Watt, who was a very well-known journalist of the day, um, Finch made a full confession. He he claimed that that uh, he definitely was there himself. He admitted that he was there with the car uh, and helped unload the actual drums. But he reckoned the bloke that lit the match that set fire to the club or the book of matches was another well-known criminal of the time known as uh, the, as the Clockwork Orange. He was uh, his name was Tom Hamilton. Tom Hamilton. Uh, was a welterweight boxer. Um, Finch claimed that he was the one that went with him, dressed in black, to the club, helped him unload the drums of fuel, and as the fuel rolled into the club, spewing out onto the floor, that, that Tom Hamilton lit the light. Tom Hamilton, only three years after the Whiskey A Go Go, disappeared, and uh, it was determined that he'd been murdered. And um, a, a fellow called um, Billy Stokes, who uh, ran um, a very well-known magazine called Port News, was um, was was arrested, convicted in the absence of a body of the murder of Tommy Hamilton. He maintained that he didn't do the crime, but jury found him guilty, and he was sent to Bob Road to serve life. Do you remember? Do you remember him, Bill Stokes? Billy yes. Stokes. Billy Stokes. Oh yeah, of course. What yeah. was he like? Um. Quiet, quiet sort of a bloke, like a mastermind type of chess player, think, deep thinker. Um, yeah, he came in doing the lot uh, over the over the, the Hamilton affair uh, with uh, no body, and, and it, at the time it was uh, it's just just to look at him. There's something about you know there was something about him that didn't ring true, you know. And then the at the uh, with the whiskey go go thing. And this, he had articles he'd written in Port News, which I actually got, got me fingers. I was interested in, in on it because what he stated and different issues, I thought, that, that sort of rings true. Well, Port, if the listeners that don't know, Port News was a magazine that um, Bill Stokes published 
that it was really Wolf, aimed at Wolfie's, Wolfie's, Wolfie's newspaper yeah. that they, well, yeah. every three months this would come yeah. out. Waterside Workers, That's known as one. Wolfie's, they used to yeah. read it. It was yeah. their, their publication. Yeah. There was lots of fire and brimstone about, you know, you know against, <laughs> uh, you know, bosses and things yeah. like that. But yeah, remarkably, he started publishing true account of what went on, what he, in, in print, what happened uh, in, at the Whiskey A Go Go. He, he published it in a magazine in a series of articles. It's quite extraordinary. And, uh, yeah, well, that's right, Jack, because they took a lot of lead that this guy, they thought it was like a bit of a hairy fairy story that he printed it up. But there were so many things that were coming true, and I'm thinking, I know that, I know that. Hang on, but they've gone down this way and they've sunk them on the whiskey on this side of things. And what what, what Billy's, Billy's on about was, well, hang on, there's a bit of truth in this. I, I Not that I knew, you know, that I'm involved in it, but I'm thinking, wow, hang on, watch this space, as they say in today's <laughs> news readings. And, uh, yeah, it, um, I'm thinking, wow, follow this, don't lose this one. And when's his next new one? It's three months or... I think it was come out a little bit quicker than what he did, his little editorials he put out. Yeah, and of course, uh, well, initially in his magazine, he supported Finch and Stewart's claims that they were innocent. Then all of a sudden it began to change yeah. and he started to write that, in fact, they had been involved. You know, he squarely laid the blame on them. But he also, um, you know, he claimed that... Uh, uh, that they were behind the firebombing of not only the Whiskey A Go Go, but then also... Uh, uh, also the Torino nightclub, which we've talked about in an earlier episode. Mm -hmm. That was in <coughs> Ann Street in the city. Uh, and Tom Hamilton, also known as the Clockwork Orange, the, the, he had a group of crims around him. Together they were known as the Clockwork Orange Gang. And uh, Stokes suggested that you know, they were all involved in this masterminding, or I don't know if you call it masterminding, you know, it's not a very sophisticated plan, just an evil one, roll drums of petrol into an occupied nightclub, but Stokes began to suggest that, you know, that it was this gang that was behind it all, and uh, I think there was a bit of a falling out between Finch and him when he was serving time in jail, you know, I remember reading in that newspaper article where they had a bit of a, a dust up at the prison or something, <laughs> but uh, do you remember anything about that? Not really, Jack, because there was, a, you could see there was a bit of a they really had them isolated, those guys. And you think, well, there's something, there's a bit of fire here somewhere, it's gonna happen, a bit of smoke. And think, oh, well, hang on, you know, what? Because I can know those articles that, that Billy Stokes wrote, and, and then they start to, they're starting to be dumb TV news stories of, I'm not sure how, after you come into jail or whatever, but it was just, I thought, wow, what's that about? This is a new train of thought for whiskey and cocoa, I thought, hmm, Hamilton, hmm, okay, whatever, I don't know, just for the general, and well, you know, just even just a couple of, you know, a couple of years into their, them serving their time, Stuart and Finch, you know, the public were asking questions, um, you know, wondering, well, you know, these blokes are doing these acts of injuring themselves during the trial, and carrying on Something. saying they're innocent. Like ordinary people start wondering, you know, and then Stokes puts out his new, his magazine, which the Wharfies were a very potent and powerful group of people in Brisbane. Like, you know, they all had families and friends and him publishing that material started to spread through the wider community that oh, maybe they, they didn't do it alone or maybe there were others involved or maybe they aren't guilty, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty heavy stuff. What do you remember about him as a crim? Like you said, he was very quiet. But, uh... Well, see, okay, <clears throat> Bill, uh, uh, Billy Stokes, he was, he was not, well, well Stuart was up in the cages, um, Finch is up in Four Yard, and Stokes, where was he? He was just floating around, but he never had any sort of like loose sort of, like if you had to go to a medical parade at the hospital, you know, Stuart wouldn't be there or Finch wouldn't be there sort of like isolated them away which sort of give you some sort of there is some there is something in here which we don't know about but but there'll be certain personnel that just yeah yeah so it just sort of give you that thought there's something going on yeah you just see it you know like you're not stupid you can see yeah you've got your normal gangsters don't worry about them but your big ones you can see there's tension there between you can, you can them and there's something it. there's something yeah, you're on your guard <laughs> be on your guard because yes yeah you did right 
Yeah. Discover Brisbane's criminal history. Join me, Jack Sim, and my team of guides as we explore Queensland's fascinating criminal past. Cases we explore include the Whiskey A Go Go, the Betty Shanks murder, and the Vampire Killer. We have a range of different crime walks and coach tours. To book a tour, brisbanecrimetours.com.au or crimetoursaustralia.com.au. Look forward to sharing our dark past with you. Just come back to Billy Stakes. He was very looking over his, uh, looking over his shoulders as if uh, he's up to something because I, I knew what, and I'm thinking, this guy, there's something, there's something here, there's something here, and we're sort of like half tipped off about something, but just keep your eye on. And you think, you know, uh, hmm, hang on, he's uncomfortable. And I mean, he's uncomfortable. And like Stuart's up in the cage, just wait the top. He knows more than. Oh, he knows more. Yeah. He knows a lot more. And he's released a bit more because they started, there's a massive interest in some of his, his issue numbers of the, on that Port News. Oh, wow, hang on, that's, that's a nothing to me. It's just a bit of, you know, a bit of union money will pay for this paper, yeah, rah, rah, you know, put on your freebie for a year, all that, but no. And his issue, thought, hmm, why are there a sudden interest in all this? And why is Stakes, uh, there's another fellow, I can't think of his name, um, uh, uh, he has a, become a prison officer and they, he only lasted a short while. Uh, what was his name? Um, well, Big Tall Baker, I think he was a private investigator. He actually, the word was, he was up there and then, then Stuart spotted him and had him removed and he no longer a prison officer. When Finch returned to England, the journalist Dennis Watt had the exclusive of interviewing him and Finch was confessing all. One of the things he had to say was that uh, he claimed that uh, that uh, Barbara McCulkin um, and her two daughters, who, which was one of the great unsolved homicide investigations of Queensland, she disappeared a year after the Whiskey A Go Go, um, and so did her two daughters in mysterious circumstances. Finch came out and claimed that uh, um, that um, two criminals were involved in that. It was front page news at the time. Finch named, this is reading directly from the Sunday Sun uh, newspaper on the 2nd of November 1988. Um, Dennis Watt published these words. He wrote, Finch named Brisbane criminal Vincent O'Dempsey as being one of the family's killers. He also said O'Dempsey plotted the attack on the nightclub which killed 15 people. After a 1980 inquest, O'Dempsey and another criminal, Gary Dubai, were charged with the murders of the women and her daughters. The charges were later dropped because of insufficient evidence. Um, Finch, who was giving an exclusive five-day interview with the Sun journalist, um, claimed that O'Dempsey offered John Andrew Stewart $5,000 to enlinch, enlist Finch as the third man for the Whiskey A Go Go attack. Um, Finch said the offer had been made through the driver of the car, which took Finch, Finch and his accomplice Thomas Hamilton on their mission of death on the 8th of March, 1973. Finch named the driver as Bill McCulkin, now believed to be living in Victoria at that time. Um, some of these characters, uh, well, of course, Gary Dubai and Vince O'Dempsey were in recent years sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of Barbara McCulkin and her daughters. Um, terrible, terrible thing that a whole generation of Queenslanders grew up wondering what the heck happened to this this lady and her children and could have they truly have paid a penalty for knowledge they had about the Whiskey A Go Go. Um, I've mentioned a few of these people that were in this article, John O'Dempsey, Dubai, <coughs> Billy McCulkin. Did you know any of these fellas in, when you were working in prison? Yeah, I, I knew, um, I didn't know McCulkin, but I, I knew Vince O'Dempsey, I knew him, he was, um, he was from down Warwick Way, he did the uh, Delvine uh, shop there, he blew that black away with the 303. Shorty Du Bois, um, he was a slippery little fellow, he was only a little, little bloke, but he kept to himself and they never sort of teamed up in the jail, which, and Vince was just, just a, a, a really a nobody. He had, I remember his visits, he had a, 
a little boy there that he used to love and I remember doing a lot of visits with supervising visits with uh, Vince and Vince would talk to me of all things he never talked to Screws but he talked to me because he knew my father-in-law from down Warwick Way and uh, and he knew and we talk about Warwick things I never talked about Jail to him I wasn't interested and what he was uh, he was on the that was the Delvine corner shop that he did that guy and Shorty Du Bois I didn't know his background um, McCulkin I don't know and this come up later with the um, the McCulkin murders. So I thought, wow, I'd be surprised. Not only he was a real good actor with me, but I thought he was a real good family man because he had a younger girl that he married and whatever, and he had this little boy and he was helping him. He was just like a real father figure on his visits to his little boy and helping him come along and another one. And I thought, wow, yeah, yeah there is a different side to Vince Dempsey. There was, there really was, and. I thought, you know, and I'm watching and he's not play acting, I could watch what he's talking to his little boy and, and to his kids and his wife at that time, I don't know her name, but I thought, gee, he's okay. But anyhow, whatever be, will it be, some people can run off the rails, I don't know, but as far as the other bit, no, I don't know any exact, uh, whether, whether Jimmy Finch was just sort of like stubborn the world, you know, look at me, I'm back in the States. I didn't remember him when I was walking down Brisbane Airport and he'd give the fingers to, you know, you know, the V victory and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Good on you, Jimmy. If you got out, you did, you didn't, whatever. I, I still don't think he did it, but I guess you were fitted for it. But Well, I was just going to ask you, John, what, what's your thoughts? I mean, you knew some of these people and, you know, they're in prison. Obviously, you're an officer and they've got to keep their guard up to some extent, but did you get a gut feeling about was Stuart and Finch definitely involved in your view or not? Stuart was somewhere in there somewhere. Finch, he was on another mission, from what, allegedly that he was there here in Australia, in Sydney and that, and then he came up for that. Uh, I don't think he was there. I don't, he'd be floating around there as a gangster, but I don't think he was there, no. And and just just his general mannerisms and either he's a damn good actor, he is doing a good John Wayne, but no, he wasn't. He, you know, he, he, was, he was here and he got it and he gonna wear this one here. Yeah, whiskey a go you'll you'll clean the slate up on that one. And it's gonna come out later on Billy McCulkin's involved, Hamilton's involved, who knows? Okay. Yeah. You enjoy reading about true crime? The Murder Trail series explores some of Queensland's most infamous cases, including Who Killed Betty Shanks, Slim Halliday, the taxi driver killer, the rampage of killer cast. Innocence Lost, The Last Man Hanged in Queensland. Just some of the titles available at jacksim.com.au. I'm Jack Sim. Please support my local publishing business as I explore some of Queensland's dark past. Of course, um, he, he made his, he, not only did he confess to journalist Barry, uh, Dennis Watts, but he also lied by a satellite, confessed to Yana, went on the current affair over the TV. And I'll never forget as a kid watching him giving this confession via live via satellite which was a big deal kids yeah. in those days <laughs> and he, you know to have a satellite live transmission to australia and yana saying to him you do realize that there are still 14 outstanding murder counts which you could be charged with if you're confessing right, live yeah, on television yeah. of your guilt and he immediately retracted his confession yeah, and acted right. like he was unwell and a bit sick yeah, and yeah. i haven't been very well lately and he yeah, more or less retracted on the, on the yeah, recording. Yeah. Pulled it. And he later on claimed that everything he told or much of what he told dennis what was a a complete lie and yeah. yana uh to current affair pointed out that uh i won't say yana said this but because she didn't but the current affair later was to reveal that they that they were that uh finch wanted a hundred thousand dollars for the interview so behind all of these confessions and details there might have been a bit of just attempt to get glory and cash as you said too you know like maybe that was another act some of what he said he did promise that he was going to come back to australia to attend the inquest that's currently running on the whiskey a go go which had been called for by family and friends of those that perished for the last 50 years the queensland government in a, an act of truly quite um quite quite a wonderful uh, thing to do decided to uh, actually hold a, 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 you know, a commission of inquiry into what happened at the Whiskey A Go Go. Finch promised a couple of years ago that he was going to come and he was going to attend that and he was going to reveal all. Finally, he said, I'm going to finally tell the truth. 
But Johnny won't be able to because he's dead. He died before he could attend the inquest back in London. And so the truth of what really happened, I've, I've, in my last episode with Councillor Paul Tully when we were chatting, I said to Paul, I do think Finch was in the thick of it all, but but um, whether he did it or not, I, he's taken it to, definitely taken it to the grave. Mm. Only him and his friend, John Andrew Stewart, buried in Luckwich Cemetery on Brisbane's north side will know whether what really happened, I guess. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, well, that, that'll be, no, I think you do a bullshit for any <laughs> <laughs> Hey, John, it's been so good having you along today. I'm sure our, our, our listeners and viewers will appreciate you sharing so honestly what it was like to be an officer around some of these very, very dangerous and serious criminals of the 1970s and 80s and really appreciate it. Would you be happy to come back on another episode to talk about a bit more about some other crims and characters? Oh, there's a few there. <laughs> <laughs> 13 years in that hell hole, yeah, mate, you yeah, know, it's good. Yeah, and being so young when I started there to, boy, oh boy, what an eye opener. Coming from Toowoomba, wow. <laughs> yeah. good, country, good old country Toowoomba. Oh, yeah, country, yeah. Light to the big smoke and bog out road. Bog out road and those brick walls, wow. Wow, well, and the prison bars and the cages and the, oh, the dungeons down below A-Wing. That has always got me, that one. <laughs> that has always got me. We'll yeah. pick it up again in the future. Thanks, John. It's great for you to come along. Thanks, and, and thanks, everyone, listening and viewing. It's been great to have you on this episode of Murder Trails, the official podcast mm -hmm. of Crime Tours Australia, and Brisbane Crime Tours. I'm Jack Sim. Um, join me next time on another episode exploring uh, the criminal past of our city. Welcome to Murder Trails, presented by Jack Sim and Crime Tours Australia.